Doctor Who the Sea Devils Episode 2 Seafort It is a clerk armed It is a clerk armed with a wrench He raises it to attack Dr. Stop where his friends stop Dr. Grabs Clark's arm. It is Clark, armed with a wrench. He raises it to attack Dr. Stop with his friend Stop. Dr. Grabs Clark's arm and makes him drop the wrench. Clark Hickman, he's dead. They killed him. Came from the sea, the sea, a sea devil. Doctor, come on, Joe, quick, give me a hand. Joe, it's all right, Doctor. We've got to get him into that cabin. Joe and the Doctor half carry Clark back. Away they came. Dot Clark Hickman. Doctor, come on. All right. Dot Clark Munster. Doctor, yes. Clark Sea Devil. Doctor, now easy. Clark Hickman. The reptile watches them go. Sea Fault Control Crew Room. Clark the Sea Munster. Doctor, yeah. Come on. Don't worry. Get yourself down here. Clark lies down on lower bunk bed. Doctor, that's right. Mind your head. Mind yourself. Joe, that's it, Clark Hickman. Joe, shh. Doctor, where's your radio? The radio, where is it? Clark points across the room, Doctor, over here. Clark Hickman. Joe, shh. Clark, rip it out. They took it, they took it away. Doctor, yes, they certainly did. Doctor opens the first aid box. Clark, devil, sea monster, monster. Clark, Joe, yes, yes, yes. Doctor, now listen to me. Take this swab, Joe. Swab his arm. Now, are are the there are are there more transmitters on this fault? Clark, no, nothing. Doctor, any transmitter radios, that sort of thing. Clark, I think so. The crew quarters. The crew. Joe, what do you want to do? Listen to Night Ride, the popular BBC Radio Two show. Doctor, it's possible to turn a receiver into a transmitter, you know. Joe, is it? Doctor, yes. It's slightly a matter of modulating the signal. You connect the output to your loudspeaker into the input of your lower frequency amplifier. Then you connect the output to your lower frequency amplifier into your oscillator. You use your loudspeaker speaker as a microphone. And there you are. Doctor feels a hypodermic, hypodermic with liquid. Doctor, Joe, ah. Doctor, now... Where exactly are these transistor radios? Clark, near crew quarters, down the corridor, next deck. Doctor, all right. Thank you. Don't now don't worry. This is not gonna hurt you, all right? Now you'll soon be all right. The Clark Hickman. Doctor soon feel better. Look after him, will you, Joe? Joe, yes. Shh, come on now, try and relax. Come on, that's it. See so the doctor and the reptile start each other. Doctor, don't be alarmed. I do I no wish to harm you. The clerk rector raises his hand, which is holding a dislike device. Doctor, now wait. We must talk. A ball of red energy just misses the doctor as he ducks. The doctor runs up the staircase and the reptile follows. The chase goes up and down ladders. See fault crew room. Joe, how do you feel now? Would you like a nice hot cup of tea with some sugar? Mm? Doctor runs in bolts the door. Joe, what are you doing? Doctor drags the table over to do- the bar, the door. Doctor wire, the doctor finds the end of a long wire, goes over to junction box. Joe, what do you do? What's going on? Doctor, just as I thought, reptiles, like those creatures in the caves, it's completely hostile. Here, hang on to this. Tight, hang on. Joe, right, the other end of the wire had crocodile clips. Joe, well, now what are you going what are you doing? The doctor fastens the clips to the door bolts and returns to the junction box. Doctor, those, those creatures can cut through anything. Rock, metal, anything. Joe, look, the metal door is starting to melt. A green hand reaches for the hole and gropes for the bolts. The doctor throws the power switch and it screams, pulling its hand back. It turns the power off again. Doctor, come on, give me a hand. Doctor pulls the table back and unbolts the door. Joe, where are we going? Doctor, well, we've got to get after the, that creature. Now, come on. 
They chase it through the fault until it jumps out of a broken window into the sea. Heart's office, WRNS Blythe is on the phone. Blythe? Try, keep trying, Hart enters. Hart, morning, Blythe. Blythe, good morning, sir. Hart, anything in? Blythe, we had this report from the civilian police, sir. A man who was here yesterday, trying to get over to the fault, seems to have disappeared. The boat, the boat he came in. Hart, oh no. Blythe, he and the girl were seen heading out to sea yesterday afternoon. Been no sign of them since, Hart. We've got to get in onto that fault to see if they were, if they wound up there. Blythe, you've already done that, sir. I thought it just wasn't answering. I can't raise them at all. Hart, well, you'd better take a look around. Give me an air sea rescue. The sea king takes off. Sea fault crew room. Joe, how's it going? Doctor Nini missed. Just got to re test about to test it. Doctor, nearly finished. Just about to test it. Doctor has been working on transistor radio. Joe, hmm. I've seen things like this, that in a modern art tradition. You don't honestly think you can transmit with it, do you? Doctor, certainly I do. But I'll prove it to you. Right, here goes. DJ, DJ OC. Here there. Hi there, ladybirds. You've got a wonderful batch of this for you this morning, so you don't feel like sitting cut off in the world. Wherever you are, wherever, wherever you are, we've got something just for you. Joe, hey, that was my favourite DJ. Dodo, I think I must have got my wires crossed somewhere. Joe, here's your tea, Doctor, thanks. Joe, Doctor? Doctor, hmm? Joe, those things that attacked us. You said you'd seen something like this before. Dodo, something very similar, certainly. It emerged from the caves in Derbyshire. Joe, the civilians, wasn't it? Really, he was telling me. Doctor, that's a completely misnomer. The chap who discovered them must have got the period wrong. No, probably speaking, they should have been called the Ecosines. Joe, that was a race of sup that was a race of super reptiles. Been in hibernation for billions of years, isn't it? Wasn't it? Dodo, that's right. If you want my opinion, there's another one of the colonies right beneath us. Joe, well, so he seems to have woken them up. Doctor, probably the rebuilding of his fault, Joe. But I thought you said they lived in caves. Doctor, well, this is a different species, completely adapted to life and the water. Joe, have they been sinking this ship? This ship? This ships? Doctor, very likely, Joe. Why? I mean, why are they so hostile? What do we? What have we done to them? Doctor, you still think of Earth as their planet, Joe. They want it back. As far as they're concerned, man is just an ape who got above himself. Right, I think that should do it. Let's have another go. Hello? Hello, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is, what is this? What's our call sign? Joe reads a note from the wall where the rodeo used to be. Joe, Osco Bravo, Dango 74. Doctor, hello, Mayday, Mayday. Mayday, this is Oscar Bravo's Tango 74. We're stranded in this fault. We have a wounded man here. Can you send immediate assistance? Can you hear me? Can you hear me over? Joe, old doctor. You don't think we got through to anybody on that old lash up, do you? Pilot, hello? Oscar Tango, Bravo Tango, I'm receiving you loud and clear. I'm about to land over. Helicopter rotors can be heard overhead. Joe, it works. Doctor, hello, Oscar Bravo Tango speaking. Who are you? Who are you? Over. Joe runs outside to look at the, for a window. Joe's helicopter. Doctor, yes. Well, no, I say so myself. I think that was a remarkably efficient piece of work. And set goes bang. A master's cell. Trenchard enters with a guard who's carrying a large box. Trenchard, right, put it over there. Here we are then, Master Splendid. Trenchard, nice, none too easy, you know, getting hold of something at this moment's notice. I had to send one of my chaps to mainland, said it was for, it was for threat calls. Master, how very ingenious. Trenchard, nothing to do, nothing to it. Just have to use the old loaf, you know. When do we leave? The Master's wearing a naval officer's cap. Master, as soon as possible. Hart's office. Hart enters the doctor and Joe. Hart. 
How can I go to the Amatry Am 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 for a story like that? Sea Devils? If I only had some proof, Joe. What about the two men on the fort? One of them was killed, but the other one still the creature. Hart, yes. Get on to sick. Go on, get on to sick bay, will you? See if he's conscious yet. Lie, sick bay, please. Oh, hello, Captain Hart, secretary. Doctor, even you must admit that something happened on that fault. Hart, well, perhaps one of them went berserk and attacked the other one. Joe, but we saw it too, remember? Hart, you may... Well, Blythe? Blythe, he's still delirious. He's babbling something about the sea devils. Naval base. A prison guard drives trench guard in a, into the HMS bit cease fight. Parks up. Actually, HMS St. George, Portsmouth. Trench guard, very. You can go to the petty officer's mess. I'll send for you later. Guard, very well, good, sir. The guard leaves trench guard, looks around, and knocks to the side of the car, and walks away. The master comes out, out from underneath a rug. In, in the back, dressed in Lieutenant Commander's uniform. Squad of ratings, Blanchard's pass. CPO, squad, eyes right. The master salutes. CPO, eyes front, then turn about, turn, squad, halt. The master walks off into the base, saluting another group of sailors on his way. Hart's office, Hart's into the phone. Well, he did say, what, why well, else? He did, did he say why he wanted to see me? Oh, all right, you better send him up. All right then, doctor. Let's assume I must set you the resistance of these uh, sea devils. What do you want me to do? Tell her well, to begin with, you must make every effort to make contact with them. Hart, so you claim they're, they're responsible for sinking the ships? Dot, it may be still possible to find a peaceful solution. We're not dealing with animals, Captain Hart. We're dealing with intelligent building beings. There's a knock on the door with Trenchard. Trenchard enters. Trenchard, have you got a minute, old chap? Oh, thanks very much. What a word were you about the golf tournament? Good heavens. Doctor, it's Colonel Trenchcard. Trenchcard? Doctor, Miss Grant. Thought you two left the island yesterday. Joe, well, we didn't quite manage to get away. Trenchcard, talk, taking a look around the island. Charming spot, isn't it? Hart clears his throat loudly. Trenchcard, oh, sorry to bother you, John. Oh, man, it's about the weekend. We're rather lying on you, you know. Hart, of course, I'll do my best. But we, but we get... But if we get a bit of fluff on, then trench card. But that's just what I was thinking. So perhaps it would be as well if I arranged to have a reserve standing by. Dutty, yes. Why don't you do that, Colonel General Captain Hart? It's likely to be very busy from now on. Hart, yes. Life is rather at full at the moment, George. Trench card. Exactly. So as I was passing, I just thought, oh, John's going to be pretty tied up for all these chips sinking. Is it fair to ask him to play golf in the middle of something like this? So I said to myself, what do I do is this. I drop by and I sound him out. It's, you see, time's getting short. I've got to go get cracking. Naval base stores. The master goes behind the counter, starts collecting items from the shelves. He put them into the duffel bag when the chief enters. Smedley, I'm sorry, sir. Well, should I know you? Master, you certainly should, Chief. Had you been not warned of my coming? Smedley, no, I'm afraid not, sir. Master, special audit. Mr. Ministry of Defence. Smedley, special audit, sir. Master, yes, the items in this bag here are defective. Do you realise you're carrying defective supplies here, Chief? Smedley, look, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, do you mind if I see your pass, please? Master, Captain Hart's preparing it right now. Just bring it down right away. Smedley, I see, sir. Well then, if you don't mind, I'll just phone and double check then, will you? Master, master that, what exactly are you suggesting? Smedley, I'm not suggesting anything, sir. I'm just obeying orders. Master, you obey my order, Chief Petty Officer. Smedley, you order, sir? The master fixes Smedley with his look. Master, you obey me. You have seen my pass, it's quite correct. Smedley, your pass. Master, you have not you have seen my pass. Smedley, no, I've got to fo fo go to the phone and check. So the master gives him a chop on the back of his ne the neck, picks up the bag and leaves. Hart's office, Hart. Now, don't worry, George. If I can't make the tournament, I'll let you know in plenty of time, trench card. 
Yes, but do you understand? I don't want you to feel under any pressure about this. You want to drop out, I suppose. I could rope in old Harry Hart. Well, perhaps that's for the best. Now, if you don't mind, George, trench card. And at the same time, I don't want you to miss your game. I mean, we'd much better rather have you if you can manage it. Hart, well, I'll do my best. Now, goodbye, George. Trench card. Yes, yes, of course. I see how busy you are. Hart, yes, trench card. Stay now. See you much longer, doctor. But it certainly depends on how long it takes me to conclude my business. Good day, Colonel. Trench card. Yes, yes, of course. I mustn't hold you up. Goodbye, Miss Swart. Been a great pleasure to see you again. Joe, goodbye, Colonel. Trench card. Well, I'll be pushing off then. Oh, thanks very much, Hart. I'll be in touch, George. Trench card. Yes. Trench card leaves Hart. Now then, Doctor. Where were we? Doctor. Where were we indeed? Ships must be kept away from this area. Hart, Doctor. Those are ma- they, those are major shipping lanes. We have prote- we have protests from all over the world. Dodder, you have even bigger protests if your ships go on on sinking. Hart, and even if we do for the clear prohibited pro- pro- area, how are we going to enforce it? Joe looks out the window, sees something that surprises her. Hart, you know what happens in the English Channel. Trinity House market boys are ignored half the time. Dodder, you must have to, to, you just have to patrol the area, won't you? Hart, what are you supposed to do? Intelligible, uh, intelligible, and the music, Doctor. You don't seem to realise how dangerous, Doc. Joe, Doctor. Doctor, what? Joe, come here. Doctor, Joe, please not now. Hart, don't you believe it? Do, Doctor, it's a master. Doctor, what? What? Where? Joe, down. The area is empty. Joe, it was him. Look, I know it, is, it was. Doctor, Captain Hart says you order a full security alert immediately. Hart, would you mind telling me what this is all about? Doctor, Miss Grant has just seen a very dangerous criminal on your base. Hart, Doctor, I have been very patient with you, but if I fault life, sir, some have been found unconscious in sonar stores. Doctor, come on, the dard drives trench card and lumpy car, car rug out of the gates just before the alarm sounds. Naval Base Stores Medley. I don't know. He was making an appointment, sir. Said he was doing some special audit. Well, I went. I went to phone up to check. And that's when he hit me. Don't know what did this officer look like. Medley, about my height. He is dark and has a small beard. Joe, you see, a master. Hark, who is the master? Joe, how did you get in here? You're supposed to be locked up. Doctor trench card. Joe, what? Doctor, well, don't you see? He arrived just before this happened. He left a few moments ago. Joe, of course. Well, let's say you talk about the golf tournament. Hart, are you suggesting that George Trenchard is mixed up in all this? Doctor, yes, I certainly am, Captain Hart. Can you lend me some transport? Hart, well, of course I can, but what's it all about, Doctor? No time to explain now. Come on, Joe. Governor's office. The Doctor and Joe arrive in the castle, the Royal Navy and Land, Land Rover. Trench card is practicing his putty, and a boy says he needs a practice. There's a knock at the door. Trench card in conference. Doctor fo- enters, followed by Joe. Doctor, Colonel Trench card. Trench card, hello, old chap. What are you doing here? Doctor, I have reason to believe that your prisoner has escaped. Trench card, nonsense. Doctor, is it? Trench card, see for yourself. Trench card turns on the monitor. Master's reading a book. Trench card. Now there you are. You see? Safe and sound. Joe, well. He may be here now, but half an hour ago, he was at naval base. Trench card, impossible. Must be a case of mistaken identity. The doctor gives him a look of his own. Trench card, I'll tell you, you know what, though. I'll go and check the guard myself, doctor. You do, yes, you do that. Trench card, yes. Trench card leaves. A moment later, Joe checks that the corridor is empty. Joe, all clear. Doctor, try and get out the outside line. No, they're both completely dead. Now listen, Joe. I want you to take the jeep, go down to the naval base and call unit. Tell him that Colonel Trenchard and the entire staff are placed to, uh, to be pla- to replaced immediately. Joe, but doctor. Doctor, no, but, Joe, just do as I ask, Joe. What, what, uh, uh, what about you, doctor? Now, don't worry about me. I'll stay here. Keep an eye on him. Now you hurry, the master's cell trench guard. But the girl saw, but the girl saw you. Master, ah, uh, 
but it could only have been it could only have been a fleeting glimpse convinced her that she was mistaken French card I tell you they don't believe me the doctor knows to answer very well in that case suggest to the doctor to come down here and see from me for himself French card what a good that what's the good of that Master I'll tell him exactly what I'm, we're doing I've convinced him to keep quiet French card could you Master yes yes but I must see you alone I don't want any guards you leave everything to me and put the doctor's mind at rest. Trenchcott, all right, I suppose it's worth a try. Trenchcott leaves, the master climbs on a chair, removes the grill from the front of the security camera. He puts a cloth over the lens and replaces the grill. Then he presses a button by the inner door and sits down. A guard enters. Master, oh, I think there's something wrong with the air conditioning in there. Here, now the grill seems to be blocked. The guard turns, looks up. The master hits him on the back of the head, double fisted, and takes his knife. Governor's office, the doctor blindfolds himself, lines up the golf ball. French card enters. French card, I have seen the guards. Everything is in perfect order. Doctor Four, the golf ball shoots along the carpet into glass. French card, bless my soul. Doctor, you were saying, Colonel? French card, ah, where's Miss Grant? Doctor, oh, she's gone back to the naval base. French card, oh, I see. Look here, old chap. I feel you were worried. I suggest you go and see the prisoner yourself. Doctor, no, I just seen him. Trenchard, what? Do yes, on there. Trenchard, oh yes, quite. But if you have any doubt, sooner. You interrogate the man yourself. You know the way, don't you? Doctor, if you insist, the doctor leaves. Trenchard picks up the eternal phone. Trenchard, doctor, Trenchard here. This is, there is Miss Grant on her way to, down to you. She's not to leave the master's cell. The door is wide open. There's no guards. The doctor stands at the doorway. Master, why, Doctor? Do you not, do come in for a chat? Don't have been out for a little jaunt, have you? Master, I beg your pardon? Don't have, why did you go to the naval stores and steal the electric spare, electrical spares? Master, how could a pussy go anywhere? You know very well that I'm a prisoner, Doctor. You've got some sort of hold over, Colonel. French card, what's going on? Master, I can see that I shall have to tell you everything. The master produces the gun, guard's gun, found his newspaper. Guard, doctor, good afternoon, and shuts the door outside the master's cell. The master opens the door and steps out, Dr. Akinka, and kicks the do- gun out of the master's hand. The master grabs a foil from a rack on the door wall. Doctor, right, that is it, and takes a foil from another rack. The two foes fence. The doctor pushes the master back and stumbles. He stumbles, so the doctor disappears by the curtained doorway. The master starts slashing it at the fabric. Doctor, I wouldn't do that if I were you. That government property. Doctor has come round behind him. They cross swords again. The master pushes the doctor into the cell. Master's cell. But the doctor falls back across the table. He dodges. Master's attack and disarms him. Follow it. Hold him, him pinned to the tip of his foil. Doctor, I always find that violence exercise makes me hungry. Don't you agree? The doctor takes a bite of one of the master's sandwiches. Master, then you'd better enjoy your meal, Doctor, because it might be your last, Doctor. Oh, you think so? The Doctor returns the Master's foil. The Master drives him back into the chair. Master, you're good, Doctor. But you're not good enough. Doctor, ah, you haven't seen the quality of my footwork. Yet, the Doctor kicks the Master's back over the table. Disarmed again, the Master stays on the floor. Doctor, tut, tut, how many times have I told you violence will never get you anywhere? Doctor turns back. Master gets up and throws the knife.